Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT official guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is our lesson number 23 and we are on page number 92. On page number 92 as you see there, there are six problems there, three in each column. We'll do the first column today on the left hand side. The very first problem that you see there, very first problem that you see there, as you can see there, as you can see here, the problem is already on the blackboard. I'm going to read it to you and you know, you know the routine. I'm going to get out of the frame. I want you to pause the video, do the problem yourself and then we'll do it, do it together, okay? Here we go. We are told that the unit digit of this quantity, 5610.37 divided by 10 raised to k is 6. The question simply is, what's the value of k? Go ahead, do it yourself. It's a quite straightforward problem. It's a quite straightforward problem. We are told that the unit digit is 6. Unit digit is 6. Well, 6 is right here. So we need to pick up the decimal place and move it two places. 1, 2. And if we do that, it will become 56. And 56 unit digit will be 6. So we need to take this quantity. If we want to move the decimal places two places, 1, 2, we just need, we just need to divide it by 10 raised to 2. There we go. That's our answer. K is equal to 2. Because now, when you divide this quantity by 100, what we end up is 56.1037, and there you go, that's your unit digit. And we were told that the unit digit is 6 right there. Let's do the next one. Next one is a work time problem. We have three people working together. R, S, and T working together can do a job in four hours. How was it? I wanted to make sure that I was able to squeeze everything in one line. We are also told that S and T, S and T working together can do the same job in five hours. The question is quite straightforward. Very simple question. Questions that you can probably gather by now what the question is going to be. The question is how long how long would R take to do to do the same job alone by himself. One more time, we are told that R, S, and T working together at their constant respective pace. Oh, and I'm not, I'm not writing all of that on the blackboard, but it's always understood they're they're, they're working at their constant pace simultaneously at their respective pace paces. When they do that. They can do the job in four hours. These two guys working together, S and T, can do the same job in five hours. The question is, if you were to give this job to R, how long will it take? How long? How long will he take to do the same job by himself? Go ahead, do it yourself. Well, let's see what we can do. We know that R, S, and T are S and T do one job in four hours. We also know that S and T take five hours to do one job. S and T do one job 
in five hours. So far so good. Let's see what we can do. The key here in a question like this, in problems like this, the key here is to make sure that they are working for the same number of hours. They are working for the same number of hours. I'm trying to figure out all my caps are sort of mismatched here. There we go. So, 4 and a 5, take the multiple, so take a number, smallest number that you can think of, which is a multiple of both 4 and 5, and that's obviously 20. So, if, this, if these three guys, if these three guys can do one job in four hours, it implies that if you were to ask them to do five jobs, if you were to ask them the five jobs, they should be able to do it in 20 hours. Similarly, these two guys working together can do one job in five hours. If you were to give them four jobs, they should be able to do four jobs in 20 hours. There we go. There's our answer. If these three guys are doing five jobs in 20 hours and these two guys are doing four jobs in 20 hours, which means that this is, this is five jobs, this is four jobs, which means this, this remaining guy, uh, whoever it is, R must, R must, this implies that R must be able to do the job by himself in 20 hours. Because they can do four jobs if you were to add R to it. If you, in other words, if you give these two guys uh, for 20 hours, they can do four, uh, four jobs. This guy will do one job in 20 hours. And we know together they take 20 hours to five jobs. There is your answer. 119. In 119, here's what we are told. We are told that they did a survey of 200 people. And this was the result. Here's the company. And here's the number of people who own stocks in the following companies. Out of the 200 people that we surveyed, 30 people told us, 30 people told us they, they own stock in AT&T. 48 people told us that they own stock in IBM. For those of you who, who do not know what GM stands for, GM is a company that makes cars in the U.S., General Motors. And 54, per, 54 people own stocks in General Motors. 75 people own stock in Ford, another motor company. And finally, U.S. Air, 83 people told us they own stock in the U.S. Air. Here's the question. We are also told, I left out something very important, we are also told that 15 own both AT&T and IBM. 15 people own stock in both AT&T and IBM. Here's the question. The question is, how many, how many own neither AT&T nor IBM how many people own stock how many people own stock neither in AT&T nor IBM go ahead do it yourself pause the video do it yourself this question will land itself nicely to Venn diagram make use of it So here we go. First thing I'm going to do here is something that is not required, but just to make you understand, just to make sure that you fully understand. If you were to add up all these numbers, 
if we were to add up all of these numbers, here we have 8 plus 4 is 12, and here we have 5 plus 3 is 8, that's 20, that's 0, carry 2, that's a 5, that's a 5, 10, 14, 14 and 14 and 15, that's 290. And out of which means, this means that there are 90 people that are being either double counted or triple counted. There are 90 people, what this tells us is that there are 90 people who own stocks in more than one of these companies. We are not interested in these 90 people. We are only interested in 7, we are not interested in, out of those 90, out of these 90 people, we are not interested in the remaining 70, uh, remaining 75. We are only interested in this 15. What, of, what, what is interest to us is that 15 people own stock in both AT&T and IBM. I'm, out of 90, 15 own stock in both AT&T and IBM and the remaining 75 own stocks in more than one firm, maybe one firm, two firm, maybe all five, who knows, and we don't care. Here we go. Let's set it up in a Venn diagram. You have, the, you have the thing in front of you, I hope. And if you don't, you can remind it. So here is our AT&T, and here is our IBM. We, are told that we were told that 30 people own stock in AT&T. We were also told that 48 people own stock in IBM. But then, but then we were further told that there are 15 people who own stock in both of these. If that's the case, then these 15 people are double counted. They're counted first as people who own AT&T and then they're counted again as people who own IBM. So to account for that, we need to subtract from this guy, 15 from here, and subtract 15 from here. Uh, minus 15 would make it 3, 33. In other words, there are 33 people who own stock only in IBM. There are 15 people who own stock only in AT&T. All right, let's add them up, see what we get. So that's 15 plus 15 is 30. Sixty-three is what I'm getting, and I hope I did not make a boo boo. Sixty-three. There we go. That's it. And we know, and we know the total number of people who were surveyed was two two hundred. And out of those two hundred people, out of those two hundred people, and here's the punchline: out of those two hundred people that we surveyed, what we found out is that. There are 63 people who own stock in either IBM or AT&T or both. We subtract the 63 from here. Hundred and thirty-seven is what I'm getting if my math is correct. And that hundred and seventy people must be the people, people who own neither. IBM, no, AT&T. That's it. What stock they own, or if they own stocks in multiple form of the other 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 firms on the list, it's not of our concern. The question simply was how many people own stock in neither of these two firms. The answer is 137, because 63 people own stock either in AT&T or IBM or both. We'll meet again tomorrow, okay? We'll do the three problems in the next column next time, okay? Bye now.